Hello everyone, Sigs here, and in this video I'm going to be showing you all of the RGB functions on the SteelSeries Apex Pro keyboard. Now, this isn't a review of the keyboard itself or anything like that, I don't know enough to be qualified to give anything more than my opinion in that regard. However, I will say that as someone who has owned exclusively $20 flat keyboards for my whole life, this thing is amazing. Uh, it's highly customizable, it has all kinds of cool features, you can customize the actuation on up to individual keys if you would like. It has the rapid trigger hypermagnetic mode for the main keys. There's two-in-one bindings, all kinds of other cool stuff that you can set from here. It does also have this little OLED screen where you can access various menu settings um, as well as download little modules that let you set all kinds of other stuff on there. You can view your health in the game that you're playing. You can view your computer's status as far as GPU and CPU temperature, RAM utilization, all that kind of stuff can be displayed on this OLED screen. Um, and it's very cool, highly customizable. It has lots of cool things that you can do. Um, and because I know that people are into this kind of thing, I will quickly move the mic closer to the keyboard so that you can hear what the key presses sound like. So there you go. But with all that being said, uh, we're going to take a look at all of the RGB functions. If you don't care to hear my thoughts about the various modes, then feel free to mute the video. Or I'm thinking that I may upload a non-narrated version just to see which one people prefer. So the settings are all controlled here in the SteelSeries GG app. And you can see all the main features here that we just looked at. And if you want to control the RGB, you come here to the Prism app. Now there's three main layers. So the first one we'll look at is the idle layer. So you can set this to show after 5, 10, 30 seconds, all the way up to 5 hours, where the keyboard will go into an idle mode and have a different profile than the main mode. And you can set that up any of the ways that you set up the main layers. Uh, it'll just appear after a set amount of time. In addition to that, there are two other layers. So there is the reactive layer which is something that will happen when you press one of the keys. And I think we'll take a look at that after we look at all of the active modes so that you can see some of the various combinations. So starting off here, this is on Prism. This is the default mode that the keyboard comes in. As you have seen, it's been going across just a nice little kind of rainbow color moving across the keyboard. And we'll go through all of the colors here. I'm going to try to do each one for at least 10 seconds so that I can do chapter markers so that people can jump around. So the first one that we'll look at is Aqua. There you go, this is the Aqua mode. Kind of various shades of blue cascading across the keyboard. Pretty cool look in there. And the next one here is called Chasing Ghosts. So there you go. Kind of a wave effect of various colors. Have the large block of yellow moving across, chasing these other various colors. And the next mode is going to be called Clown. So there you go. It's similar to the prism, but much, much quicker with a few different colors. Very vibrant, very uh, noticeable. And the next one we'll look at here is the Color Fusion. So waves of colors kind of moving around the keyboard from the top to the bottom. There you go. And the next one's going to be called Comet. So this is like one row at a time, kind of sim simulating a comet moving around the keyboard. Pretty interesting color pattern there. And I'm going to save disco mode for later because that one's really crazy. Uh, let's take a look at Drain. There you go. Colors moving in towards the center and then fading out as if they're going down a drain. Pretty interesting layout there. And moving on, we have Phase, which is just a breathing red and nothing else. So I guess that's some collaboration with, with Phase or something where this is the one that they wanted. Not very interesting in my opinion, but uh, there you go. That is one of the preset modes. And the next will be Freeway. So again, various colors moving around the keyboard, similar to that Comet one. But with different colors moving in different directions. There you go. That is the Freeway. Next up, we will take a look at Haze. Which, it's pretty subtle. 
Looks like the camera's picking it up all right, but it's just very slowly moving across the keyboard. Various colors, kind of a pink and a purple, and then like a blue to a white to a red. Moving across pretty slowly. That is haze. And then prism, we saw. So we'll go to the next one, which is called radioactive glow. Now it's pretty much a solid green, but there is a slight fade effect going across the keyboard, as you can see. So that one's pretty cool, I think. And we'll take a look next at Rainbow. So, kind of like the prism a little bit, but it is rows of individual colors with the fade effect moving across the keyboard. Very rainbowy, whatever you want to call it. And the next one is Rainbow Split. So that is sending waves of rainbows pulsing out from the middle of the keyboard. Very bright, very vibrant. Pretty cool looking, I suppose. And the next one's going to be uh, Self-Destruct. So just waves of orange and red moving across the keyboard with a fade effect in between. That is Self-Destruct. And the next one is Shaved Ice. So cascading down from the top goes from white to red. Back to white to blue. Back to white to yellow. Yes. To white. Back to red. So just kind of uh, cascading colors down from the top in waves at various degrees of saturation, that is shaved ice. Uh, next up we have solar. Which doesn't seem to be doing much right now. Currently it's just a solid kind of cyan color. Interestingly, oh there it goes. Okay, so it takes a while. Guess it's kind of uh, simulating a sunset in the sky there, or a sunrise. As it goes from daytime very slowly to nighttime. I guess that must be the sunset, and then this would be the sunrise coming up here. Reaching midday with the bright blue sky, which is going to last for a while. And then the cycle will repeat eventually. There it goes. That one's kind of cool. It's a nice touch. I don't know that I love the colors, but I just like the idea behind it personally that it's, you know, simulating a, a sunset and a sunrise. That's pretty cool. So we'll let the uh, sun come up here to complete the cycle, and then we'll hop to the next one. So next up we have Static Fade. So this is just static colors, the little stripe going across the uh, center and the edge of the keyboard there. And I guess that's it. Looks like it's not fading or doing anything else. It's just kind of a static fade, as it were. Uh, next is uh, Steel Series Orange, which just, I guess this is their brand color. So just a solid, solid orange color. Nothing fancy going on there. But of course, if you combine it with the reactive layers, you can make some pretty cool stuff happen, which we'll look at pretty soon here. Uh, next up, Vapor Dreams. Again, appears to be just a static layout. Oh no, I lied. It's changing. It's just very slow. But you can see the colors unless I'm hallucinating, appear to be kind of fading. You can see very slowly each row changing color. It's kind of uh, going down, I guess it looks like. Very slowly, so this one's going to run for a while to complete a full cycle, but you can see coming down are the colors very slowly fading through. And there you go. Um, so we got a few left. I'm going to do, we'll do warp drive, which is just a white kind of pulsing out from the middle type thing, which I think looks very, very cool. Might get a little annoying to have that in your peripheral all the time, but it is a fun thing to see. And then we have West Coast, which is just this color palette here. 
with the blue and the yellow and the orange and the red. And it does not appear to be moving at all. It appears to be a static layer. So if you like that color layout, there you go. And we'll take a look at my two favorite ones last. So uh, this one is called Wabash and Lake. And there you go. Uh, to me, it's the, it's the matrix. It's like the neon green binary against the black background from the Matrix movies. Um, not sure if that's what they were going for, but that's what I see there. I actually like this one a lot. So that's pretty cool. That is Wabash and Lake. And the last one, which is very crazy you're about to see, is Disco Mode. So, holy cow. There you go. Unfortunately, the camera is not the best at um, picking up kind of the color saturation. I can't tell you how beautiful this keyboard is just how saturated the colors are how bright and vibrant they are um, it definitely looks a little bit washed out on the recording but the effect on this one i mean it's like a thousand christmas trees all going at once it's uh it's very very crazy so again another one i wouldn't want to have on all the time i think it would get a little distracting but um very cool and interesting effect so those are all the active layers uh, actually i lied there are also effects so um, you can set a breathing effect. You can go ahead and change the color to be whatever you want. And you can set, I guess, by sliding this slider, the breathe duration there. You can see with that, we drag it out this way. And it breathes a little bit more, like so. So you can set your color here, whatever you want. Let's say you want a nice... Nice blue there, nice dark deep blue. And then this would be, you know, a kind of a slow, dim, dark, pulsing one. And you can set it to this end, would be mostly bright, and then it would just do a quick little dip like that. You know, you put it a little bit more in the middle. Mostly blue, mostly solid color, nice slow breathe effect. Change the color to whatever you want. Even do custom color codes if you want a very specific color. Change the animation there. And you can also set the speed here, so let's see the difference. We set it up to a 10. Oh my god, that's really breathing. It's having a heart attack. Um, you could slow it down right down here. Now it's going to be very, very slow. Nice slow fade if that's what you're into. And I am curious too, with changing the speed here... I think is how quickly it's going to cycle through this here. So it's going to be dark for that amount of time. And then if we slide it up here, it should be dark for less, even though it's on the slower speed. Assuming that they stack at this setting and this setting work with each other. I guess we're going to find out together now. Oh yeah, see? So it's just, it's very, very quickly doing the slow fade. Now it's like blinking. If I set it down here, it's going to be like flashing. Yeah. So very customizable with this breathing effect. You know, whatever you want it to do, you can make it do. Get the right balance, get that right breathing effect that you like, however you like it. That is the breathe effect. Uh, now there's color shift. So color shift is similar to that prism effect where the colors are just kind of moving across the keyboard. Um, but you can set the colors and the duration of the change here. So again, super highly customizable. Um, but let's say we wanted like a white, maybe, and like, I don't know, a red, and then a green. Actually, you know what? Why don't we just do RGB? So I do a red, and then a green, and then a blue. Oops, got to move that. I've noticed you have to move that off of the white or the black, or it doesn't care where you put this slider. But So there we go. There is RGB, and you could set the duration between. So we do like a long red, and then a quick fade to a green and a blue. Or we could do a quick red and a green, and then a long to blue. And you can see too, it, it fades the colors. It doesn't go straight from one to the next. It actually fades to the colors in between. You can see kind of that like purple layer coming in there. And if we set them kind of more equidistant, you can see the gradient too on this bar, how much or how little of the gradient you're going to get. So 
ton of customization. I mean, you can do whatever you want with this. I would personally maybe do something like like this, and I think you could do like a double. I'm curious what black would do. Yeah, there you go. So I mean, you can do so much with this. It's it's really crazy. But that is the color shift effect. Now there's a reflect, um, which is reflecting your screen. So you could pick whatever part of the screen you want, and it'll reflect the colors onto the keyboard. So if you're playing a game or something, you know, you could select this full size one and have kind of whatever colors are are on in your game reflected on the keyboard in real time. Um, I don't really have a very good example of that because my monitor is just set up with the with the GG and my recording software and that kind of stuff. So it's all static. If I move, there you go. I'm dragging around just the GG window. And you can kind of see it's changing on the on the left side there, but um don't have a very good showcase of that right now, but you could imagine you could set whatever you want down there. That would be like my taskbar buttons. Whatever part of the screen you want to be reflected onto the keyboard in real time. Very cool setting. I just don't have a great showcase of it here. Uh, and the last one, obviously, just a single color. So static color, whatever color you want. You could put in the color code, get the exact color that you want. Slide right on through the spectrum here. And there you go. So not very exciting by itself. That one is not. Also, I forgot to show you too with this. Oh gosh. <laughs> with this color shift here, you have all of these other options with the animation too. So let's just go back just to show you to like the red, green, blue, equidistant kind of thing. And then you could do size. So that's going to be like the thickness of each band as it passes. If we thin it down, it should be almost more like that prism effect. Yeah, you can see that. And you can set the speed. If you want it rainbowing across really, really fast. That actually looks kind of cool. I kind of like that. I haven't played around with, with these settings yet, but... Lower the speed, nice and slow, whatever you want to do. And then I'm not going to spend all day going through all these unless people really want to see them. You let me know, I'll show you. But um, you can go left, you can go up. Let's move up the speed for the up and the down. There you go, rows going up, rows going down. And we have radial in. That's kind of cool. Almost like that drain effect again. And radial out, which is going in the opposite direction. So tons of stuff you can do with this color shift. Again, I would maybe do something like this. And then like a white. I like the green and the white combo for some reason. And then like a purpley? No. Something like that. And then I would do... Like that? Actually, I don't like that. I don't know. Anyway, you could see, you could spend hours here just sitting around playing with these, trying to find something that looks cool. Um, but we'll go back to the static color so that I can show you these reactive layers, which stack with each and every active layer. So, um, reactive layer, first of all, you have the line. So what that is going to mean is when you press a key, it is going to do that effect. So we can do, the color is currently black, so that's like a fade. But if we set it to white, you'll see it pulses out a white line from whatever key you press. Now you can also set the speed again, so up to a 10. Very quick little lines pulsing out from wherever you press. Down to a 1. Very, very slow lines pulsing out from whichever key you press. So what that looks like, just at a medium speed with these colors when you're typing, you know, might look something like this. It's going to be on whatever row you type in. So if you're just typing, it's just going to be those rows. And if you set it very fast, I do find... It's kind of cool. Uh, with a slow speed, I have noticed, though, that it kind of just fills in the keyboard. So it's just going to be white for a very long time. Uh, but that is a line effect. And again, that stacks with any of these other layers. So if you wanted to set it to, you know, maybe this matrix one... And then 
the reactive layer, the line with the white. You know, you get a little something like that. You change the color, you do whatever you want. Set it to a red. It's almost a little more pink, but set it really fast. Little Christmas tree action going on. There you go. So that is the first reactive layer. Uh, we'll go back to just a static color, like the green, I guess. And so the next effect is going to be a ripple effect. So there you go. When you press, ripples out from the key. Again, you can set the speed. So at a one, very, very slow. Set the color, which again, I, I kind of like the white. So very, very slow, which again, when you're typing, the effect is just kind of everything's white for a while, is what I find. Um, and then you could set the animation speed up, which again, when it's really fast, I find the effect is almost just like uh, strobe, almost. Like it's very green and very white at the same time. Um, but if you go with kind of a medium effect, maybe like a seven. Yeah, that's still too slow. Yeah, so it just kind of keeps it filled in. Too slow, it keeps it filled in too fast. It's a little too stroby, so it can be hard to find a balance, I think. But that is what the ripple does. And something else that I find very fun is just to kind of send waves across the keyboard with that. So, pretty cool. Um, and then the last effect is a fade. So again, with the static color on, let's set a fade to white. So what that means when you press the key, it's going to stay that color for a little bit. And this one I really like. So again, with a slow speed, you have to click kind of slowly if you want it to actually change. Uh, with a slower speed, it stays lit for a very long time, which again, if you're typing a lot, the effect is those keys just kind of stay lit. And then if we crank it all the way up, it's very quick. Kind of a strobe type thing going on. Um, but that's very cool. Again, you could, and you could do this with whatever other thing you want. So say you want the, um, again, I'm just going to keep using this as an example for now, but you get this effect to go to the reactive layer. Look at that hacker man here with the matrix and the different colors. Um, I just think that's so cool. So that's pretty much all of the effects. Now, again, you can go crazy with, with combinations of effects here. So, you know, the prism going in with the ripple on white. Having a nice little ripple there. That's a little quick. Turn that down. A little ripple effect going across when you type. Uh, you can stack these layers however you want. Any one of these pre-built animations, along with any one of these effects. Let's do a red line with the comet. I mean, whatever you want, you know, you can get super creative. And now something else that I think is even crazier is you can map individual keys. You can hold control and select just the keys that you want. You can go like this, select a box, and you can set different things for different keys. So as soon as we hold, now shift doesn't work, so I have to go like this, but let's say we wanted to take our main keys here, and we can set these to, oh, I messed up already, because I changed layers. So let's just go like this, we'll just grab a nice little chunk here. Set the breathe red effect on that, I guess, because why not? And then all these other keys have the other effect going on. Maybe I want my home row to be the prism. Maybe I want my just my space bar to do something, anything, disco mode, just on the space bar alone. And you can get really crazy here, just customizing everything. And one thing that I haven't tried that I'm kind of curious about now, if I go to the reactive layer, let's see, if I select these and I do react ripple white. Now, if I press a key, okay, nothing happens. But if I press one of those keys, 
now the effect happens. So the effect won't spread to the other unmapped keys, but it will happen on those keys. So if I just wanted, when I press a number key for a line to go out, you could set just that. Um, so, I mean, again, I could spend hours here showing you all these different settings and options and trying to get creative. Um, you can go crazy with this thing and it's just really cool. And I thought people might want to see that uh, if you were maybe thinking of purchasing this keyboard, um, and you wanted to see what all the RGB options were with this software. It's pretty cool. Um, I'll show you just a couple settings profiles that I've been using. So this is my main setting, just chill. It's the default prism effect, but when you press, it does this little ripple at this speed. So this is like, if I'm just chilling, I have all of the key presses, which you can see here in chill, uh, to be pretty soft on the actuation. So nice chill, just for typing, doing stuff, browsing the internet, you know, reading articles, that kind of stuff. You got that mode. And then I do have white, which is just, I just like this one for some reason. It's a white keyboard. It's very easy to see, but when you press, it just does the red ripple. So this one I have set up more for like typing, if I'm typing long papers for whatever reason. Again, the flashing can get a little distracting, but I do just like the white is really easy to see on the keys. And you get this cool little ripple effect when you press things. So I like that one. And then um, for some of the games that I play, I basically have two settings. So this one you can see with like the custom mapping here, um, we have the keyboard set up in a very fun way. So this is for um, playing video games. So uh, you have your movement keys, WASD, highlight in red, highlighted in red, so you can more easily find that home row. Uh, the secondary movement keys highlighted as well. Just a little vin visual indication uh, for you to get your hand on that home row a little better. And then all my spell keys in green, and then kind of my, you know, control keys, control, alt, shift, caps lock in a slightly different color just to kind of highlight the edges of the keyboard and just make it easier to see from the periphery kind of the layout of the keyboard to get your hand centered a little bit better. Um, my record key, game capture key with the orange glow just to make that a little bit easier to hit. Something cool happens, I want to take a, a clip. I have a macro set up there, which is something else you can do with this keyboard. So if you hold the SteelSeries key and the F10 key, you'll see you can set macros here. So you would um, press whatever keys you wanted the macro to be, and then press that again to save it. I'm not going to do it now, but you can set any macro to any key, any combination of keys, anything you like from there. So I have a recording key set up with the F8. I have a little bit of glow on the space bar, just to be a little fancy with it, I guess. Um, I push and talk key, again, just kind of framing the keyboard, but... That's pretty cool. And then I have two different settings. So one of them is for more competitive content. So for this one, I have the, oh, I have to go over here, sorry. I uh, have the actuation set much higher on these spell keys with the rapid fire actuation to make it quicker to hit my spells. And then the chill mode just has lower actuation. And this chill mode does also just have a little white effect, whereas the competitive one does not, because I don't want flashing lights in my periphery when I'm doing anything competitive. But, I mean, totally customizable profiles. You could set, you know, how far you have to press each key before it registers, how quickly it registers on the way back up, um, all kinds of stuff, and all these really cool RGB features. So, I guess that's it for this video. I don't know how well of a job I did. I just kind of wanted to show off the RGB features and it probably turned a little bit rambly, but hopefully you thought it was pretty cool to see, you know, some of the stuff that this keyboard can do, as well as the bright fancy colors. And I will probably put up just a non-narrated version of this that just scrolls through all the different RGB options for people to see, and then leave this one up just kind of with my commentary. I don't know which one people care about more. Probably the one with no talking, because who cares about my opinion when they just want to see the function of something. But either way, I do hope that you enjoyed. Thanks for watching and have a good one. Peace.